So today, we're not only celebrating the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, but today we also celebrate Veterans Day today. Uh, Veterans Day is formerly uh, known as Armistice Day. It was originally set as a U.S. legal holiday to honor the end of World War I, which was November 11th, 1918. So today actually marks the 100-year anniversary of the end of World War I. In 1938, legislation was passed making November 11th, quote, dedicated to the cause of world peace and to be hereafter celebrated and known as Armistice Day. The new holiday was intended to honor those veterans who served in World War I. And then in 1954, after having been through World War II and the Korean War, the 83rd United States Congress and President Dwight Eisenhower amended the law from 1938, and they removed the word armistice and inserted the word veterans. And so with the approval of this legislation, Veterans Day became a day to honor all men and women who have served honorably in the military, both in wartime and in peacetime. Friends, we owe our veterans a debt of gratitude because the freedom that we enjoy in this country is not free. There is a cost associated with the freedoms that we enjoy. And the men and women who serve in the military pay much of these costs, as do their families. The men and women who serve in the armed forces, along with their families, make sacrifices in all sorts of ways. They sacrifice being together as a family. They sacrifice holidays and birthdays together. They sacrifice the potential for higher earnings. They often sacrifice their own health and well-being, and sometimes they even sacrifice to the point of giving their lives in the line of duty. And so today, we say thank you to our veterans, to those men and women who have served honorably in the military and to their families for the sacrifices that they have made for our freedoms that we enjoy in our country. In our gospel from Mark today, he also offers us a different example of making sacrifice from that of our men and women who served in the armed forces. It is an example, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, Mark tells us about this poor widow who puts all that she had into the treasury. Two coins, to be exact. And this is significant for two reasons. First, in ancient Israel, widows had no inheritance rights, and so they were usually dependent upon their children or male relatives or charity for their very survival. And then second, that the widow gave two coins as opposed to one suggests that she did not spare even what she could have justifiably kept for herself. While this action went largely unnoticed by the crowd, Jesus notices and points it out to his disciples by making a comparison between her gift and those of the more wealthy contributors. He tells them, quote, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. You see, this widow trusted in God for her very welfare. She trusted that he would take care of her needs. And she gave not out of obligation, but out of love. It's a reminder for all of us that giving sometimes hurts. It can be uncomfortable, but if it didn't hurt at least a little, then it wouldn't be a real sacrifice. And this is what Jesus is getting at by pointing this out to his disciples and pointing it out to us today as well. Now, as most of us are aware, uh, the Archbishop has rolled out an archdiocesan-wide capital campaign. One faith, one family, one future in Christ. I have heard Father Tom describe this campaign as a meat and potatoes campaign. In other words, it's not a campaign with frills or extras, but one to help some of the basic needs in the archdiocese. If you have already made a commitment to the campaign, I want to say thank you. If you haven't made a commitment, please prayerfully consider participating in the campaign. 
At this time, I would like to close by sharing with you a video uh, that was uh, made by a couple here at Ascension and the process that they went through when considering their participation in the campaign. Thank you for your attention and for your prayerful consideration. Hi, we're Molly and Keith Johnson. We've been Ascension parishioners since 2001. All four of our kids went to Ascension Catholic School and we feel so blessed to be a part of this wonderful community. We just wanna share with you the process that we went through when considering our financial commitment for the One Faith, One Family, One Future campaign. So a few months ago, we joined a small team doing some of the early work on this campaign with Father Tom. And one of the first things we had to do was decide what our financial commitment was going to be. And as we read some of the material, I remember Molly, one of our first conversations was, holy smokes, we've, we, we have tithing, we have call to share, we do a little bit with Mardi Gras. Uh, we had kids at, a, at Aquinas, and Aquinas had a capital campaign the last couple of years. But we prayed on it and we reflected, and you know, what it kept coming back to was you know, the need to give back. You know, we're so blessed. We have so much in this, this Ascension community. And I'll just share a few of those things with you. We, we have a daughter who moved to Chicago uh, early this summer, and we visited her several times. And those of you familiar with Chicago know there's some, some great old churches around the city. And so we'd go, we've, we've been to Mass several times on Sunday, and we usually go to 9.30 or 10 o'clock Mass. And one of the first things we noticed was how small the crowds are. I mean, these crowds at Sunday Mass in Chicago are, are, are literally smaller than our weekday noon Masses here at Ascension. So it really made us think, you know, that's one of the things we thought about was, you know, how great things are here at our parish. You know, one of the other things we think about is, is just take a look at our bulletin, and, and I know you do, but it's, there's eight to 10 pages of things that, that are happening around this parish that help us in our faith journey. I mean, we go, to, we go to Mass outside of our diocese, and some of these churches have bulletins that are one or two pages long. I mean, you can literally read them at the stoplight on the drive home from church. And, and then the last thing I'd ask you to, you know, that we thought about was, you know, our pastor, Father Tom. You know, Father Tom's been with us at Ascension for 16 years. That's unheard of. I mean, most bishops, you know, don't allow priests to stay at parishes that long. So. You know, if for no other reason you make a financial commitment to this campaign, I would, I would ask you to think about in thanksgiving to the bishop for letting Father Tom be with us that long. So that's it. I mean, what it came down to us was we, as hard as it is to, to you know, make the financial commitment that we made, we felt we had to give back. Things are great here. And we would ask you to give it uh, some serious consideration, pray about it. I hope my monotone voice didn't put you to sleep, but that's, that's, uh, that's all we have. God bless. Thank you.